Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Skip. Skip is a professor and a nurse from Dallas in Texas, in the USA. So let's see what Skip has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello. Hi. Hello, can you hear me, Skip? I can hear you. Amazing. How are you doing today? Pretty good. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you so much for taking the time for the interview. Of course. <laughs> Skip, before we start the game, tell me where you're from. I am originally from uh, Texas, a very small town out in the western part of the state. Mm -hmm. And moved to Dallas probably, I think, about 30 years ago. So, Texas boy. <laughs> I have a few a few guests on the show from Texas, a few of them. Mm. And um, so now you're living in Dallas now? Yes. Well, the Plano, a, a suburb to the north of Dallas. But yeah, I'm, I'm in the Dallas area. Our scene. And what's the best part of living there, in your opinion? In Dallas? I think there's always something to do, something is going on. When you come from a really small town, there's not a lot to do. It's <laughs> kind of eye-opening then to move into a city like Dallas, where really there's something going on all the time. I see. And um, what do you do for living, Skip? I am a registered nurse, and I'm also a professor of nursing. Very interesting. Wow. <laughs> well, tell me a little bit about your job. What do you like the most about your job? I really, you know, not the patients. I'm tired of patients. That's That was in the past. Um, I really like working with the people I work with and with my team. That's really where I derive the satisfaction right now, especially right now um, yeah. in the midst of the pandemic. So, you know, really it's that, it's that camaraderie and that collaboration that uh, it makes me want to get up in the morning. Amazing. Beautiful. Okay, Skip. So just before we start our journey, William and the Magic Box, how would you like to tell me something interesting about yourself? Something interesting. Let's see. Well, I like to, I don't, I don't have any usual hobbies like most people have. My hobby really is writing and research. So what uh, two things most people probably would love to stay away from and not ever want to do. But I think that's kind of interesting. I think that's eye-opening to some people. Um, really, at this point in my life, it's, it's all about looking forward and what I can leave the people that are coming up behind me. And research and writing and publishing is a part of that. So I that's, see. I guess that's interesting. I don't know. Maybe it's not, but to me, it kind of is. It is for sure. For sure, it's interesting. And um, what's the inspiration for you to, to write, to get those ideas? Well, the inspiration just I alluded to was to give something for the next generation of nurses and healthcare providers coming up, uh, you know, imparting my knowledge and what I've learned through my experiences, you know, to them, so that maybe they can have it maybe a little easier, maybe. Beautiful. Very good. Are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and to share your point of views? Um, sure. <laughs> Welcome to William and the Magic Box. So I have here my lovely. of random fun questions okay i'm just gonna play a song now just for us to move a little bit before the first question let's do it okay what are you drinking coffee coffee <laughs> Okay, Skip, just, so, just before we start the game, so through the journey, if there is a question that you don't have an answer for, you don't want to talk about, I always can change, okay? It's all very friendly. Okay. First question for you is, who is your biggest hero? 
My biggest hero, probably my father, I would say. And I say that, and there's lots of people that were influential in my life, but really my dad was the most influential as I was, you know, we, my parents divorced when I was quite young. Um, I think I was six or seven. And so but even in the time that had passed, uh, you know, I would spend summers with him out in LA. And when I came out, when I was 27 or 28, everybody else I think was a feigning shock and horror. My dad just said, oh, I knew that, you know, 25 years ago, <laughs> you know, so it was just, um, nothing could phase him. You know, oh. I mean, it was, he was oh, perfect, fine, let's go have dinner. You know, it was like nothing. Um, also, the way, the way he conducted his life, mainly in the, in the business world, you know, is really something emulated, even though I didn't exactly follow that path that he did. Um, but I've always looked up to him as, uh, as, as a hero to me. Amazing. And um, when, you th when you look back, what is the most memorable lesson you've learned from him? I can think of a, of a very memorable event, um, and I can remember it because I was only five years old, but I can recall it so crystal clear. Um, I remember that my mom had asked me to go get a broom so she could sweep in the kitchen or something. And when I walked in the closet and wasn't really looking, I stepped on a scorpion. <laughs> Now, you're in wow. London, y'all don't have those there, but here in Texas, <laughs> We have these things called scorpions. They're about that long, oh. and they do sting. And he stung me on my left big toe, and I remember screaming and screaming and screaming until my dad got home. And then I remember dad had in the big chair, and I remember I climbed up there, and then once I was in his arms, I felt, you know, it, it still hurt, but I felt better. Mom was hysterical. Dad was like, once again, come here. You know, it's okay. Oh. You're gonna live. <laughs> <laughs> And when this, when you have a, when you have this kind of trouble, with Scorpio, you can you can be very serious or not. Well, you know, if you're if you're compromised in some way, if you're extremely young or extremely old, it it, it can be fatal. But you know. Back home, we got, they were, we'd find them in the house once in a while, obviously. And um, I, I just didn't want, we always watch where we step. Even to this day, when I go to pick up shoes, I do that to make sure there's not a story, <laughs> even though we don't have those here in Dallas. But, um, <laughs> you know, my old habits. My star sign is Scorpio. <laughs> so is mine. No way! Hey. <laughs> Which day? Which month? October 25th. Okay, I'm seven, I'm 17 of November, so yeah. Me though. <laughs> Next question, let's do it. Okay, Skip from Texas. Next question is, what does money mean to you? What does money mean to you? Well, without it, life would be really, really bad. <laughs> So, but money is uh, obviously money is important to you know to do the things that I like to do. Um, but I think money at this point in my life has maybe found a more uh, another place than it was 20, 30 years earlier, when it was really you know very important. And you know I'll work all these extra days to make extra money and. Um, I'll just say, I think it's a great thing to have. <laughs> you think that money can bring happiness? Absolutely. Money, if you don't know how to make, I, I don't know, people just don't know where to shop. You can, money does buy happiness. There's, there's happiness in being able to pay all your bills and not have to worry. That's inherently happy, or at least it, it, it is for me. Let's see, good one. Next question, let's do it. 
Okay, so before the next question, when was the moment that you thought, okay, I was born to be a nurse or to be work in the healthcare um, uh, fields? Oh, when I was just out of high school, I did not have a job yet. I was in college, but I didn't have a job yet. And so I, I got a job at the, um, our local hospital back home and really watching how the nurses take care of the patients, you know, being able to observe all that from a very neutral standpoint, you know, just from my position, we're near as elevated as theirs. You know, I, I gained a real appreciation and, and also because I knew that that kind of job would give me uh, mobility because really you can go pretty much anywhere you get a job as a nurse you, you know if, if you want to and so those two things were pretty attractive to me so i would say that's what really started my interest in healthcare and in nursing and uh i see good one next question is what is the strangest gift have you ever received strangest gift or the funniest Oh, I, well, you know, I think the strangest gift I've ever gotten, and, to, and I don't know if it was strange or not, but it seemed kind of strange to me, was I was at a birthday party yeah, years ago. I think I was, maybe I had just, I think I had just come to Dallas. And someone was at the party that I didn't know I don't remember having had, had invited him, but we didn't have, we didn't have Facebook, you know, we didn't have any, any social media at the time, but he bought me a bottle of cologne. And I'm thinking, how in the hell do you do that? Because you don't even know me. I, you know what, that's, I, don't, I thought that was just, I just thought that was strange. And, and later someone said, wow, what a, what a gift. You know, he didn't even know you and he, you cologne that's kind of a personal thing that you that you know someone they like but they don't like you know before you buy something like that Let's see other than that that's i think that's the strangest oh no 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 there's one more once one year my mom when i moved into my home up here in plano a few years ago mom brought me a bunch of toothbrushes and I said, what in the world? He goes, it's for your guest bathroom. Don't you ever think about that? And I thought, oh, I had never thought about that. I never thought about that before. So I get those are two strange presents. But at least the last one has some utilitarian value to it. <laughs> I was about to ask you, how about the cologne? Did you wear the cologne uh, or not? Was no. <laughs> I kept it for years as a joke. <laughs> It was just funny. Um, I think, what was it? Paco Rabanne. Oh. You remember, that was a, remember this was in 93, 94. <laughs> it was a while back. <laughs> oh, dude, that's funny. Next question. Next question for you is, if you were to raise a child, what are the most important thing would you like them to learn? I think the most important thing is to teach them to be very strong in their beliefs, but also to be respectful of people that, that may not share their views. And that someone that disagrees with you doesn't mean that they're an enemy. It doesn't mean that they're a bad person. It just means that you're two people, different viewpoints. I mean, you probably won't end up dating them, uh, you know, because of that. That doesn't mean they're a bad person. And really, the person that can do that is going to cultivate some amazing friendships all across the spectrum. And, and I think really, I think that's really, especially right. Do you have siblings as well, Escape, or not? I do. I have one brother and one sister. And uh, you're saying about being gay, um, of course, you mentioned that you have the support of your dad, but like overall uh, for your family, it was a supportive time for you? Yeah, it really was. Um, my family is, is 
it's pretty well educated. You know, I didn't have to, I didn't have to deal with, you know, very simplistic beliefs that I would have to, you know, overcome. I said they were all, you know, I would say ultimately very accepting, and that was not a good fun. Next question. Go ahead. Let's do it. All right, Skip from Texas. Next question is, if you could be a character in a movie, who that would be and why? A character in a movie? Oh, no one's ever asked me that. Okay, if um, I would like to have been Indiana Jones, I think. <laughs> Someone who loves adventure, someone who loves to travel, <laughs> and gets into all sorts of really, I don't know, really scary situations, <laughs> I think. Very adventurous, for sure. Very, very adventurous. <laughs> good for you. Very good. <laughs> Next question. Before the next question, um, tell me, in your opinion, what Texas, uh, compared with other um, states in the U.S., what, what Texas stands out uh, compared with the other ones? There's something different or something unique about the states that you can share in your opinion? I think that Texans, by their, by their very nature, are independent. Uh, independent and opinionated. You know, we think our state is the best. And <laughs> and I really always thought that was conjecture at first until I started meeting people from other places. And I thought, you know what? That stereotype is actually true. <laughs> Native Texans tend to be very forward and very opinionated, especially when dealing with, you know, with our state. And so I would say, yeah, I, I think that is, I think that is true. I think that's and I think that's different than a lot of states. I don't see other people people from other states. I don't want to say bragging or boasting, but in fact that is what it is, kind of, I guess. I don't see that from the other states. I see it from my friends from other countries. I, uh -huh. I do I see I see that, but I really don't see that from my friends that are from other states, you know, uh, that are obviously very proud of where they came from. They If they are, they it. <laughs> for whatever reason, I, you know. Next question for you is, what would be your theme song if you had your own show? My theme song. Okay, I, I've, I've got one. Once again, this is gonna be a little esoteric, <laughs> a little off, but I think my theme song would be An old trance song from the mid '90s. I think it was a Robert Miles, the DJ. Uh, Children. It's an old trance song that's very. It's got the, and even to this day when I hear that song, I'm immediately transported. Um, if not back, you know, to my, I call it my gay youth when I first came out, late '20s, early '30s. But of all the years, I think that song has it continues to resonate with me. And so I'm not sure how I would make that a theme song, but hey. The first one comes to your mind, so why not? It's a producer's <laughs> job. <laughs> This is what I want. You make it happen. They are not right or wrong. It's just what comes naturally to your mind. Um, and you, you just mentioned again about uh, coming out um, when you were um, 29, 30 years old. 28, yeah. Um, When, um, what was, it does, did something happen to you that said, okay, that's the moment when I'm going to come out, I'm going to be myself, or it was naturally you thought, okay, that's the moment. You know, I had, because I knew I was gay when I was six years old, seven. I remember, I mean, my dad was, um, in that part of his life was a football coach. I remember going with him into the locker room after games. And I thought, wow, this is really a great place. I <laughs> said, I really like being in here. Um, now, I did learn a few words that my mother was somewhat horrified 
come out when I would repeat, <laughs> when I would repeat them at church or at the grocery store, whatever. Um, all right, now I forgot the question. Say it again. Oh, the coming out. So I knew it then that I was gay. Now, I didn't have a word to put with it, but I just knew that I was somehow different. So fast forward to when I made the decision to move out of my hometown. And I did that specifically so I could come out. It was, there was no gay future where I was from. There still isn't, but there really wouldn't, there really wasn't then. So that was really the impetus of me actually moving. And so once I got settled here in Dallas, you know, I, I said, well, you know, it's time. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's time to do this. And so, but I didn't do it like most people. Most people just have a talk with their, I actually wrote a letter. Well, I'm saying, all right, so this is the reason that I'm, because I, I think my mom was saying, well, why do you want to leave, you know, your, your hometown? And I thought, well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, Dallas got expensive to drive to every weekend. So <laughs> I think I need to, I think I need to live there to truly appreciate what the city has to offer. So I, it, that's how I came out to them. And that was really the impetus of doing so. Is it was just time. It, it was time to do that. I see. Next question. Let's do it. Oh my God. Tell me who is that? Show that's me. Isabella. She just jumped up in my lap. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, beautiful, Isabella. How old is she? Isabella is five. Oh my God. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Next question is, what do you think people no, need to know about each other before they get married? Well, I would give the normal gay answer and say, well, well, you know, what they like in bed. But um, <laughs> that's typically that's not a problem in, in our world. I think you really need to know the person and I think you need to know them more than at a superficial level. And you could actually say that's about sex. You need to know that person something beyond that. Because at some point, sex too will assume its proper place in, in the scheme of things. And you know, and your partner who may be beautiful now may not be in 10 years. And you really have to learn to love that person on many different levels, not only physically spiritual, emotional, I, I, and, I, and I think a lot of, I hate to say that because, you know, I'm slamming my own people, but I think a lot of gay men, and yeah, I've been guilty of it, tend to, do, tend to put the physical in a far more important place than it truly is. And I can say that now because I've watched it happen and I've watched it unfold. And it's, it's very predict, it's very, it's reasonably predictable when you see two people together and you know it's all about physicality and you know that there's really nothing substantive that sure enough in a couple of years if you know no you know we got a divorce now on to on to the next one um my opinion only. sure absolutely that's what matters <laughs> that would piss some people off you saying that but, it is, but in fact i think that is true absolutely Right, next question for you. Let's do it. Before the next question, I would you like to tell me um, through your career, what, when you think about what, what, what was the most challenging situation or let's say in a positive way or negative way through your career that you can share that said, okay, or a situation that you felt like very proud of being a nurse, um, you know what I mean? And something that you could share. You know, you actually asked like a three-part question. <laughs> it, it's as far as what makes me proud to be a nurse. The fact that I'm a nurse, it doesn't necessarily make me proud. It's what what makes me proud really is back in the years that I did take care of patients. You know, you could work your butt off, you know, for 12 hours and receive really no appreciation. But once in a while, once in a while, you'll have a patient that will say, thank you so much for caring about me, or thank you for making this 
horrible experience a little bit more bearable. Really, it's those things that are for me that make me think, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad I do what I do. Clearly, I have made a difference, a positive difference. Very good. Okay, next question is, what is your favorite TV show? I'll be 100% honest, I haven't had cable in years, years, three years, I think now. But historically, the last time I had a TV, my favorite TV show of the past was probably Desperate Housewives. Um, that's the last show that I was truly addicted to, that I couldn't wait Sunday evenings to watch that. You know, nowadays, you know, not having cable, I really don't. I really couldn't tell you what's even on TV, much less what my favorite show would be. I mean, if you don't include Netflix stuff, I mean, I, I really don't um, have a favorite. Um, although I will say the last Netflix series that I watched, Santa Clarita Diet, you ever heard? That was the most bizarre thing. I've never laughed that hard in my life. It was a short series. I think it lasted maybe two years, maybe two seasons. But I, that was a that was a good one. But other than that, really, since then, I really haven't watched a lot of. Great, cool. I have three questions left for you. Okay, Skip. Let's do it. Okay. Next question for you is. Where do you want to be in 10 years time from now? In years, I will be very close to retiring, I hope, with any luck. So I want to be financially secure. And I want to be able to look back on all the years past and, and be proud of what I see. That's I, I really, that's in 10 years, that's going to be a very reflective time before you retire and, and leave a career. But I really think that's that's what I want. That's the position I want to be in, the ability to do that. Good one. Two questions left. Let's do it. Before the next question, Skip, I'd like to tell me something. Of course, um, for the last two years, the world went upside down regarding the COVID crisis, yeah? And of course, you work in healthcare, you know, you were literally facing it, like visibly, you were there, you know what I mean? Um, facing a lot of uh, challenge um, in your workplace. But saying that, when you look back through this challenge time, what's the most positive thing you took out of this very challenging journey so far? I've seen, it's been great watching, and when I say people, I mean nurses, it's just watch them go to new levels and be able to reach a place that I don't think anybody ever thought any of us, and the ability to take on new challenges, you know, almost constantly, and the ability to actually to reach down and pull that out. And I think that's been amazing. You know, it, it, it sucks in the situation that caused that to happen. But at the same time, it's um, things like that that actually give me some hope, you know, a little bit of hope for the future. That, you know, that we responded in the way that we did as best as we could do at the time based on the information. You know, that we had, which has been exactly two years ago. Um, it was actually two years ago this week that we seriously looking at what was going on. You know, it was more theoretical in January and then it became much more real for the end. But I think that's that's my big takeaway from that. It's great watching people do things they never 
amazing. Yeah, I think it's um, when you look back, you can see um, how much people there, uh, you know, the healthcare they were able to face in the challenge moment, but they were there, you know what I mean, like fighting every single day. And uh, I think it was beautiful. Like here in London, in England, I don't know um, in in the U.S. or um, in our state, but here there was a moment um, in 2020 where you know things start. Um, so every 8, 8 p.m. at night, everyone was clapping outside their door, their window. 8 p.m. every night, just to clap for the healthcare people. You know what I mean? The workers. They were working so hard. And I've got goosebumps now talking about that because it was so powerful, like the whole country or the whole, you know what I mean, people just going out, like put their clubs or selling coffee for, for the healthcare um, workers. It was just amazing to see how beautiful. It was humbling for us too. We weren't, I've alluded to, we weren't used to those kind of acolyte. That That's not something, well, for one thing, we don't go into the steel to get those because you're really not gonna get, not gonna get them very often. But uh, we were very humbled by that too, because we had this, a similar response here. Um, I think some of the local elementary schools would make us little signs, little posters saying, thank you for what you do, or you know, you're making a difference in someone's life. Um, or even more poignant, one little kid wrote, thank you for saving my dad. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, there's so your powerful moments. Um, Can you imagine? Absolutely. Yeah, they are. Absolutely. Next question is, what is the worst first date you have ever been on? I think it was when I first moved to Dallas. I met somebody, I met a guy at one of our local, one of our local bars as we did back then, you know, once again, no Facebook, no Instagram, <laughs> no MySpace, didn't even have that yet. And so I met this guy at a bar and we agreed, you know, I said, so do you want, and he had asked me, do you want to go to dinner on Monday, the Saturday? So Monday afternoon, probably about five o'clock, I didn't, I wasn't sure where we were going to go. So I, I, I called him, I said, so where are we going to go eat? He said, oh, why don't we go to this place? I said, okay. Kind of a nice restaurant, so I did dress up a little bit. And this is a real pet peeve. Anyone that knows me knows that. He was one of those people that every time a course arrived, he had it sent back because it wasn't quite right. Oh, oh my gosh, that brass thing. That was the most tortuous hours of my life. Oh my God, I can imagine. Oh. He didn't like the appetizer. So he had it sent back and had him redo it. Didn't like his steak because it was too rare. And I said, sweetie, you ordered it. <laughs> you ordered it. He, it was, oh, it was awful. I mean, I'd never, that's when I first learned how really pretentious some people could be <laughs> and how entitled some people could feel. And I, really that was, that was the worst date. And, I don't think I ever went back to that restaurant because I was embarrassed. I was, you know, I could not wait for that to stop. <laughs> oh. Who paid the bill in the end? You know what? I think I did. <laughs> and I think I only did because I think I remember seeing the wait, or I saw the waitress, the server come by and I said, <laughs> please, you're really quick. And so I can pay it, we can go. But I think I paid that bill. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that's um, <laughs> torture for sure. <laughs> it was torture. <laughs> Last question. Ready, Skip? I'm ready. Let's do it. But before the last question, I would like you to, to tell me, um, people watch this interview, would you like to start a career as a nurse in the healthcare? What would be your best piece of advice for those people? Get a good grounding in the uh, sciences, especially like in high school, you would take your advanced placement, biology classes and chemistry classes, because they'll prepare you for, for what's to come. I would say, yes, it's a great job now with great benefits. You get to travel if you want. You make pretty, pretty darn good money now. 
but at the same time, it, it really is a calling. And if you don't, if, if you're a person that doesn't like other people, you're not going to do well. You won't be happy. Because really, the first two or three years of that job, unless you want to branch into management or, even, or other areas, you're working one to one with people in very close, I mean, on a very personal level. And you really have to make sure that, that you can do that. And the, you know, one of my other jobs is a professor of nursing at a local college. And I can see that in, in, in the, the ones that really are doing this because one, they thought it was the cool thing to do. Two, oh, I'm just here for the money and the travel. That goes out now. And, and I know that really they're not gonna be or even worse, because they're not happy, they're going to make it, and, and something's going to happen. You know, sadly, got through patients. And I really, I would encourage someone that it's great if you want to be a nurse, but really make sure that it's calling and that that you feel led to. Good one. Last question for you is. If you could be in somebody's skin for 24 hours, who that would be and why? Oh my gosh. I'm assuming you mean somebody famous. I think... It doesn't need to be famous. Could be someone that you admire a lot for some reason or... <clears throat> well. No, I think... Honestly, I think what who I would want to be in for 24 hours is Beethoven. Because I was a trained pianist when I was growing up. And really when I was 18, I just walked away from it. Just, eh, you know, don't want to do that right now. When the pandemic started two years ago, I said, all right, I'm going to buy a piano and I'm going to see if I can pick this back up you know, somehow because I needed something to do, really something to take my mind off of what was unfolding before my very eyes. So I found a little baby grand piano for sale in New Hampshire, of all places, at an estate sale. Had it shipped down here. A good friend of mine gave me less, and I was struck by what kind of mind can produce this kind of music. You, you know, really timeless, ethereal. You know, something that makes you think. And I've all, and I've often wondered, you know, what. What would it be like to be a musical genius? You know what? So I, I, that's what I would say. Amazing! I love the answer. My God! So I'm so glad this <laughs> question came up to you. I love it. Think <laughs> different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, skip. It's not the end yet. Okay, let's play now the word association game. I'm going to give away some words, and just have one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking. Okay. So. I hope you are enjoying the interview. Before we do the word association game, don't forget to give a like, don't forget to share this video, and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Just click on the bottom right there. Thank you so much and enjoy the word association game. Politics. Turmoil. How about love? Hey. Money. Hour. How about life? Death. Sex. Fun. Family. Important. Religion. Kumsi kumsa. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> One word for fear. Scary. Friendship. Everything. Desire. Fun. Again. Regret. Lesson. One word for wish. Desire. Happiness. Un unattainable. <laughs> <laughs> one word for success. Work. Perfect. Um, one word for Texas. Big. <laughs> one word for USA. 
bigger. I'm joking. <laughs> um, a hot mess. <laughs> One word for for nurse. Aaron. And the last one now, professor. Alan. Good one. Let's pretend now we're going to meet your best friend for a coffee. We are going to the same restaurant you went for your date, your trust <laughs> date. <laughs> We're going to go there for a coffee and I'm going to ask your best friends. Tell me the most beautiful thing about Skip and tell me something that he still need to improve on, to work on. What do you think your best friend will tell me? <clears throat> Sounds like an interview question. Uh, tell me something about... I think they would say that I'm very loyal, probably to a fault. But I'm very protective, loyal to my friends. I think as far as improvement, they would say, relax. <laughs> Don't get so caught up in what's going on around you. <laughs> uh, some of them might even say he needs to grow up a little bit. Because I, tend to have the mind of, you know, someone in their early 30s, late 20s. I don't think that's ever gone away yet. I kept thinking it would. I know my family wished it would, <laughs> but I still <laughs> tend to think like someone a little bit, you know, considerably younger. I don't know my place. That's what one of my friends, you just haven't learned your place yet. <laughs> <laughs> It's a Scorpio thing to be. It's a Scorpio. It's because you're a Scorpio. That's why. That why? <laughs> <laughs> Let's play now. Skip and the magic box, and you can ask me a question. So you can ask me a question now. Skip. Okay. It's a two-parter. What's the last thing you think about before you go to sleep, and what's the first thing you think about when you wake up? Beautiful question. I love the question. By the way. I've done already over 500 interviews around the globe and no one asked this question yet. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's, a, it's going to be a very um, um, easy answer, um, Skip, because um, for the last, let's say, one year and a half since I started doing this project, trust me, I go to bed thinking about that. I wake up in the morning, think about that. I just can't wait to wake up and it starts, you know, contacting people, it starts to organize my interviews, connect with people. I think my whole day, it's about that. I think it's, um, you know, I have my full-time uh, job, but as soon as I have a free time, as soon as I have a break, as soon as I wake up in the morning, I go to work thinking about that. I wake up in the morning, you know, I, I go to bed. For example, now in London, it's um, 7.30 more or less p.m. I have another interview after that. And when I finish the interview, I'm just going to organize myself. I'm going to go to bed, think about that. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to go to the gym before going to work. And all my routine is about that. But saying that, I must say something as well. When I was seven years, around six, seven years old, my lovely grandmother, I never forget this moment. The same moment when you, you had with your, uh, your dad about the five years old situation when you had the, the Scorpio. I never forget this um, biggest lesson that my grandmother taught me at the time. And I would never forget. I never, she told me, my son, she called my son, said, my son, before you go to bed, I even got goosebumps now, my God, so powerful. Before you go to bed um, and before you wake up, before you stand up from your bed in the morning, close your eyes and just be thankful for everything you had also be um, uh, ask for protection to God, the universe, whatever you believe, be uh, protection to you, to people around you. And believe me, nothing bad is going to happen to you. And I'll tell you something now, I skip. Every night when I go to bed, I can't fall asleep without having this moment with myself. I think about her and I think about her. Thank you about, you know what I mean, God, the universe. I just, I, I just have this moment of gratitude about what I have, about my life, about everything around me, about my family, people around me as well. And when I wake up in the morning, I have the same thing as well. Before I, I, I stand up, I get up, I get off bed. I just have this moment with myself. My God, thanks for another day. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being alive. 
so yeah thankful to my grandmother and i will go you know what i mean I'm, i think i'm gonna die doing that every single day this little routine because i've learned that and they're so powerful and i'm so glad that I, uh, she taught me that because it's she was right you know nothing have bad happened to me of course i have challenge moments as everybody else has i think all of us but i remember her saying nothing bad is gonna happen to you and i think she was so right so yeah those two things i have these little moments before going to bed and when i uh, wake up and i have this beautiful project like that takes my you know what i mean i was born for that i think uh, it's something that i i love to do I, i'm so i'm so um fortunate and um lucky to be able to connect with so many people around the globe and to listen to their stories in life and to see their their eyes shining when they talk about their memories about their you know what i mean their challenges in life or their beautiful memories so i think that's my answer to you for sure great answer my god i love the question <laughs> your abuelita was very smart oh very, very smart Oh, thank you so much. Did you enjoy the interview? No, thank you. I had a wonderful time. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for taking the time for the interview. I really appreciate that. But before you go, Skip, how would you like you to share a positive message or a positive quote, something that inspires you in life? Something that is... <laughs> I hate... I mean, well, you know what? I do have a favorite quote, but it's not inspirational. <laughs> It's okay. It's, uh, my favorite quote always has been since I've come to Dallas. It was from Alice Roosevelt Longworth, a Washington D.C. socialite, who said, and everyone has heard this paraphrase. Actual quote is, "If you can't find something nice to say about somebody, I'm sit by me." <laughs> <laughs> that, really, that's my favorite quote. <laughs> Amazing! I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let me say goodbye to Gabriela. She's there? Oh, no. He's wandered off somewhere. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thanks so much. Keep, keep in touch, okay? Thanks for the interview. It was a pleasure connecting with you. Thanks for sharing your memories. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> so, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, to share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, First, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I see you there. Bye-bye. See you next time.